Next up, we have a, a talk on the future of communication, featuring the one and only Claire McGooey for the CFO of Giphy. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Doug. Who's familiar with Giphy in the crowd or, or has used it? Uh, amazing, amazing. So, so what is Giphy? Giphy is um, basically a GIF search engine that's evolved into a leading content player. Um, maybe I'll take a step back and explain what a GIF is for those of you who don't know. A GIF is um, basically a media format that is getting shared a lot now. It's a five second, usually kind of loop. Um, there's no sound to it. It's like a mini video clip and it plays on repeat. So you'll see people sharing these in like Facebook Messenger. They're going around Twitter now. They're in basically any messaging social platform you see. You're starting to see GIFs appearing if you're not seeing them already. Um, I got some. Yes. You have the, the clicker. Whoa. So we're seeing GIFs here. This is a GIF of our logo, Giphy. Um, this is my own personal GIF. It said, I'm Claire. I'm CFO at Giphy. And we bring you all the GIFs. So in answer to the question of what is Giphy, um, as I said, search, uh, search engine for GIFs evolved into a content platform. Um, what that means is if you think about inputs of content coming in, uh, we source all of the GIF content from around the world. Uh, we have a number of partnerships with all the leading uh, networks, studios. Um, we have a crawler. We have a GIF studio in LA um, that actually does GIF creation content for a lot of leading brands. Um, we have UCG that's growing really fast. And we basically pull all this GIF content into Giphy, um, the database. We make it searchable. We make it so people can find GIFs. They can, um, we tag them so people can have the right re reactions to them. Um, and then we push them out. We distribute GIFs through our huge platform of uh, partners. We have a large number of API integrations. Um, we work with most of the major messaging apps and um, social platforms. We're in Twitter, Facebook. Um, we partner with Tinder, launched an API integration with them early this year. So we're now in dating apps as well. Um, and business applications such as Slack. Um, for those of you who use Slack at work, you see GIFs flying around um, with our integration there, which is quite cool. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you want to go a little deeper and kind of say, what does that actually mean in terms of all this GIF content and the GIF network? Um, I can show you an idea here. This is our um, elections coverage page. So what we're doing at the moment is pulling in a whole bunch of elections coverage. Um, since we launched the elections page, there's been, I think, half a billion views on all the content, um, which is really cool. Uh, I think we jumped ahead here, but it's cool. And then part of the other ways we source content, as I said, is through UCG user-generated content. So we have a whole suite of tools. Uh, there's Giphy Capture um, for desktop. There's GIF Maker on web. And we have Giphy Cam on mobile. And to give you an example of Giphy Cam, this allows users, and this is me, my daughter, and my husband here, um, making a GIF. <laughs> Just jump back to that one. Um, Basically, users can now create their own GIF content. So you can download the app on your phone. You can go and make your own GIFs, and you can share them. You can post them. You can put them to social. Um, and then the final piece of how we get GIFs out, as I said, is GIFs now play everywhere. That's one of the really cool things about them, is you don't need to wait for an autoplay. You don't need to have an ad pre-roll. Um, they're in Facebook, Twitter, iMessage. You can play them in Slack. You can play them in Pinterest. Um, they're, they're out there and they're playing, so they're already in the network. Gift possibilities are endless. Yeah. <laughs> so I just touch on some numbers to give you an idea of Giphy and the kind of scale we're at now. Um, we launched uh, in 2013, so we've been going a little over three years now. Um, we're currently doing about 150 million, actually it's exceeded that, this slide's a little out of date, 150 million uniques a month um, across our embeds and our web traffic. Um, and in terms of gifts served, we have served up in the three years and a bit 500, is that 500 billion, half a trillion. Um, half a trillion <laughs> half gifts. Half a trillion gifts, um, which is quite a lot of gifts. So I guess yeah. that settles the, the age-old question of GIF or GIF. 
Yes. So <laughs> it is official. It is GIF. We call it GIF. Um, the guy who invented the GIF, Steve Weilheit, um, he called it GIF. Maybe we can really? ask the audience. So, so <laughs> who calls it GIF? Show of hands. And GIF on the other side? Okay, it looks like okay. GIF Okay. <laughs> so Steve, he invented the GIF. It was 1987. Um, our context is that things have changed a bit since 1987. Just a bit. We call it just a bit. It was named GIF like the peanut butter. Um, as I said, things have changed. The way we use GIFs has changed. The technology's changed. Um, this is how we used to work out in 1987. Um, <laughs> so, and we're Giffy with the hard G, like GIF. Hard G. Hard G. So, yeah. so why are GIFs now the, the future of communication? And how do they play a role in communication? Um, so I think the thing about a GIF is that it's so visually compelling. When you see this moving image, it, some, it's something that people can resonate with. It can be interpreted very easily, very fast. Um, people can connect with it, and they don't have to read a huge bunch of words and text to go and try and translate what it means. Um, if you think about the way we've used communication over the last you know, years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, um, it's evolved. And even just in the last you know, 10 years or so, we've gone from voice to text to um, you know, smiley faces and emojis through to GIFs now. So there's an evolution that's been happening with messaging becoming faster, shorter, more immediate. Um, and we've already seen that, and Giphy's now at the forefront of that. Also, how we communicate is changing. Um, you think about communication platforms such as social, um, messaging platforms, business platforms such as Slack, I mentioned, um, and even dating platforms. Everything is changing. Um, this is just an article that was released in BuzzFeed earlier this year um, from some data that Tinder Take note. Released. <laughs> Use GIFs. So Tinder, and, uh, Tinder have said sending a GIF on Tinder is 30% more likely to get you a response and your conversation will last twice as long. Um, so this is the impact that putting GIFs into messaging within dating is already having. So GIFs are helping people find love. <laughs> And this is one of the GIFs that um, has actually done really well in Tinder. It's not playing, but maybe it'll play in a second. <laughs> um, and the final piece is why GIFs come into communication. Um, we can go back to that one. Take it back one slide. Slides are being a bit sticky. Anyway, so attention spans are shortening. So as we know, everybody's now just wanting things more immediately. And this was an article that came out last year after a study that Microsoft reported. Um, they said the average human attention span has fallen from 12 seconds in 2000 to just eight seconds in 2015. Um, and the average estimated attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds, which is more than that, so. Are goldfish using GIFs yet? <laughs> I'm sure you could probably get a goldfish to watch a GIF for a while. It's not got much else to do. <laughs> so this plays really nicely. If attention spans are shortening, if people are wanting things more immediately, the average loop of a GIF is five seconds. Five seconds maximum normally. Um, which is pretty much where our attention span is going um, and as long as we're going to get. <laughs> so that plays into, uh, you, you know, what makes... GIFs so visually compelling? Why are they so, beyond the, the time frame, why are they so effective in, in communication? Yeah, um, so I think for years we've been trying to put all these words, um, feelings and emotions into words to try and communicate them. And how many times have we sent a text message um, and shortened it and put the wrong emotion across or it's been misinterpreted? Too many. And, <laughs> and it screws things up. So. We're still trying to put these feelings and thoughts like this and this and put them into words and put them into phones um, and try and translate stuff. And it doesn't always work. So I think the question is, why are we still trying to do that? Um, so we've all got phones now. We're all using them every day. But why are we still trying to type in words to communicate? <laughs> it's like we don't know so there's, there's other ways now there's <laughs> how can you express that in words if you were trying to communicate that emotion it's you couldn't fit it in a text message 
So what the thing we, we think is that words are really good at the literal. You can use words to describe things like a chair or a car or a cat. Um, but words are just really bad at the abstract. So to describe things like love, um, love can take so many different meanings. It can be funny, it can be sarcastic, it could be intimate, it could be painful, it could be so many different things than just love. Um, so where gifts come in is, let's see, they help kind of change the way we think about communicating. So social happened after we got things we realized that words were kind of getting a bit clumsy. Um, and everybody's on their phones, we're all texting all the time, we're all on Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook and um, all the other platforms, and there's just not enough time to condense everything and put them into these words and write long messages and wait for ad pre-rolls on video links and click through on links to go and see full articles, like my mother sends me um, at least three times a week. Um, and we want things more immediately. So being able to put a little five-second looping GIF into something is just much easier. So what we've done over the years is invent shortcuts, shortcuts that get people you know, able to communicate quicker. So I love you when we started doing messaging, then eventually shortened down to love you. Um, then it got even shorter and it went to 143. Then I think we shortened it again and it became V3. For those of you who remember this, and then, you know, simple heart. And now love can be expressed by a GIF. So this can be love. It's one form of love expression. Or this can be love. This is actually my daughter, again, and my husband demoing for me. There's just lots of different types of love that you want to share. And it's not necessarily one view or one GIF that suits everybody. You've got thousands of GIFs that can express the emotion you're looking for. So, that's, as C CFO of Giphy, I mean, you're very involved in the, the GIF world. So, what is your favorite GIF and why? Um, that's a good question. I have tons now of favorite GIFs because um, we just live, breathe GIFs all day. This is one of them. This is um, the... Can uh, we flip back to that a second? Sorry. Let's see, we'll go back. This was Leo... Leo at the Golden Globes and Lady Gaga's bump when she walked past him. And the bit that we love about this is just the eyes, the reaction from Leo as she bumps him. Um, yeah, it's the, the GIFs aren't looping properly on the visuals, but you get it. it, it when it GIFs properly, it just auto plays and Leo's reaction is classic. So that's one of my favorites. Um, another one is something that's a more personal GIF that resonates because it was sent to me by one of my best friends. Um, it's taken from a BBC sitcom, absolutely fabulous, that... Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not something I'd probably share at work to explain anything, but it's just a more personal thing that connects the two of us and we shared, you know, times in the Our last gifts decade or so. sent around yeah. constantly on the office? Oh, the ab main all day. We, we use Slack for communication, um, and literally there must be hundreds of GIFs that fly through Slack um, every day. Yeah. Amazing. It gets quite competitive who can find the next best. <laughs> Their bonuses. <laughs> yeah. People just do it for fun. They just love it. It's, yeah, people live, breathe GIFs at Giphy. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being here. I think that's all the time we have now for Giphy, but how can people go and, and create their own GIF? Um, people can create their own GIFs by going to the App Store. We've got a bunch of the creation tools there. Um, we've got Giphy, the main um, app you can download to access the GIFs. Um, we've got Giphy Keys, which is a Giphy keyboard. Um, we're also powering a bunch of other keyboards like Gboard, um, so you can still access GIFs through a whole number of ways that have Giphy GIFs. Um, and there's a desktop capture, Giphy capture creation tool as well. So you can make your own, you can pull in other people's, you can share them through all the messaging platforms you're probably already using. Um, Wonderful. So get to Giffin. Um, <laughs> one quick question. It is. We've got two of the main offices here. Um, we're in Soho just now. I'm moving to meatpacking. Um, later this year for a bigger space because we've outgrown it. Um, we're about 60 people in New York and we opened our LA office earlier this year, which is Giphy Studios. Um, and they're about coming to 15 people. 
and they're doing all of our gift creation work um, for brands, partnering with people like Nike. Um, we did a campaign for Weezer for their album launch. Um, that's the creation side. Great, great. Well, thank you so much again for being here. It was cool, awesome. Thank you, thank you, Doug. Um, thank you.